Welcome to the Michael Mercy YouTube channel, an 80s nostalgia channel for adults to revisit the golden age of heroes. This is not a children's channel. Kids under the age of 13 should only watch these videos with their parents. Nerd must stay. Wow, look at that Cadillac. Hey guys. Oh, gorgeous. Look at that Cadillac. Time for another Transformers review. This one is brought to you by Good Brothers Micah Lennon and Adam Hurt. And it is for the Transformers Ectotron, which is based on the Ecto-1 from the first Ghostbusters movie. And it also includes a little Slimer in there. And if you're interested in getting one of these, just a heads up, that Big Bad Toy Store does have him on pre-order. So Ectotron, this is an interesting new uh, crossover idea for Transformers. Some of the crossover lines, they kind of make you scratch your head. They don't always go together. Uh, but this one is absolutely perfect because Transformers, the alt mode is a vehicle. And so I hope this is the first of uh, many crossovers in this style where we get to see some iconic 80s vehicles as a transformer and a quick look at the box there's the ghostbusters logo celebrating 35 years i love that it's exactly like the g1 boxes and on the back there's a little bio function paranormal investigator so he's a ghostbuster himself when life splatters you with marshmallow goo just go with it when the Ghostbusters need a ride to the next paranormal hotspot, it's nice to have one who can also handle a proton pack. And tech specs, just like in the old days. Let's pull out a tech spec meter and see what it, uh, what his rankings are. All righty, let's see. They've uh, changed the, uh, they've put in symbols here. That's really cool. So I'm assuming the muscle means strength which is fairly high up there. Intelligence probably, with the gears in the head. He's pretty smart. Speed, it's not bad. I mean, he is a 59 Cadillac, so he's not gonna be burning up the road. Uh, firepower, that's pretty cool, these symbols. And uh, ghost trap, I'm not sure what that's supposed to symbolize. I guess he's very good at catching ghosts. Uh, and then just a Ghostbusters symbol, so I don't know what that's supposed to mean. Uh, hit up the comments uh, if you want to translate that. And isn't that awesome? They're using the original 1984 back-of-the-box art work for this one. That's really cool to see all the different stuff that's going on on here. An actual GM endorsement here, so this is a GM licensed product on the front you've got the different stages of transformation and some custom ectotron very similar to the g1 style as well so before we open this box up i wanted to give you a comparison of since this box looks so much like a g1 box i wanted to compare it to a couple of g1 boxes so when i first saw it i just assumed it was the same size as uh, the G1 cars, but it's not. It's actually quite a bit bigger than a, a G1 box. So it is both longer and taller than a G1 Autobot car. They might be in the same scale. It's awfully close anyway, but it is quite a bit bigger than a Autobot car box. It's closer in size to a Dinobot box. So we've got Grimlock here. It's just about as wide as Grimlock's box, a little taller than his box. And they are just about the same length. So if you're just curious as to the size of the box, if you wanted to stack it up with some of your other G1 boxes, uh, yeah, he's a little bit bigger than Autobot cars. All right, let's crack this baby open. Oh, 
and it's in a clamshell, so if you want to put it back in the box for display later on, you can. First thing I noticed right off the bat, look at this Slimer. That is just exploding with color. It's, uh, it's not glow in the dark, but just the way the light hits it, it is spectacular. That's awesome. Let's, uh, let's get this little guy out. Oh, hey, come back here. Get over here. Oh, he slimed me. Oh, I feel funky. Get in there, you little bugger. Phew. All right, we're going to let him cool off there for a second. Thank you, Dr. Stance. And let's take a look at the Ecto. And here is Ectotron in his Cadillac mode. Hey, this is really cool. He's got a big antenna, which most of the Ectos that I've seen don't have that. But uh, pretty, pretty nice in terms of alt mode. Pretty accurate um let's compare him to the 124th scale jada toys ecto which we looked at not too long ago on the channel here so it's a little bit smaller than the jada ecto but just for a comparison since this one is pretty accurate to what we saw in the movie no chrome on ectotron just silver paint but he, it does have Ecto-1 on the license plate, which is a nice little detail. And since it's an official GM licensed product, we do get the Cadillac symbol that's on the hood. And we've got a light bar made of translucent lights. Um, the top on Ecto is always just a mess to me. I, I can never remember what's on there and what anything does. But uh, according to the Jada version, it's pretty accurate, just the coloration is different. But we've got this thing repeating, this thing repeating, little nub there, whatever this thing is, even this thing. Um, the placement is off on a few of the things, like this thing is a little different, light bar on the back. Um, that's interesting. Ectotron has lights on the back and the Jada doesn't. Um, here's another thing. Uh, even though this, this one is a smaller scale, a little better detail on the back lights. These are translucent, looks like translucent plastic back here. And on the Jada, it's just solid. He does have a little ladder to get up onto the top and hoses, which are thicker on Ectotron, just for making it a little bit more durable. And then the major difference is this thing right here, which isn't on the actual Ecto at all, uh, because I'm assuming this is Ectotron's gun, his blaster. So it, it's nice that he actually has a spot for it to plug in, in his vehicle mode. And it looks pretty nice. There are, aren't too many seams. Um, that mess up the look um, just right there right there uh, the biggest one is going across the hood right there got the nice white detail on the tires too which is a must for Ecto as far as the inside goes um, no it's not it's not accurate there's too much stuff going on in there internal robot workings so no seats or anything like that the back door doesn't open up either this isn't meant to hold passengers but in terms of a transformer with a very cool alt mode hey that's awesome uh, I love the Ectomobile and it's uh, it's really cool to have another version of Ecto plus you get the Ghostbusters symbol on the side and there they look fantastic really nice detailing on those and before I give them a transformation 
one more comparison, the real Ghostbusters Ecto-1A. And uh, yeah, this one's much bigger. It's huge. And also uh, a more cartoony look to it, uh, more kind of bulbous. They weren't going for an actual real looking Cadillac. They might not even been have been allowed to do a real looking Cadillac. So uh, yeah, different look to it, but just to give you a size comparison there, uh, the Ectotron Transformer is quite a bit smaller than the Kenner Real Ghostbusters Ecto. And I believe you can actually put Slimer onto Ecto. I'm a little hesitant to let this bugger out. Are you gonna behave yourself? Okay. There he is in there. Get out of here, little spud. All right, no more sliming people. Here's a look at Slimer. And uh, man, he is really, I mean, there, there are see-through um, toys, figures, but just the way this guy is, I don't know, poured something, it really makes him glow in the light. And uh, he's kind of squishy. Yeah. Yuck. Oh, that's gross. <laughs> yeah, he's he's bendy. You're not going to break him. Part of a ugh, squishy material. And he does have a little hole on the bottom with a flat bottom part. So you can actually sit him down. And he's not going to fall over unless you give him a good shove. But he can sit on his own pretty well. But with that hole, I noticed right here on the front of Ecto, there, uh, well, there, there's a hole right here, a, a peg on the gun. So I think you can just plug Slimer onto the gun. And now Ecto has hitched a ride. So that's another nice little thing that a lot of the original Transformers, 84, 85, 86, weren't capable of doing, holding all of their weapons. And so they'd get lost or you would just have to set, a, set it aside. I think that's really cool that uh, Ectotron can not only carry his gun, but there's also a spot to plug Slimer in so that he's not going to get knocked off so that you don't have to just have him on the hood and have him falling off. There's a little peg in the front here. I don't know if he's going to fit. No, that's, I don't know what that peg is for. It's too small for him to plug into, but it looks like the main plug for Slimer is that one. And having him on there, it just, I like how that looks. It, uh, the lights on Ecto don't work. So it's cool to have something that looks like it's glowing. Um, I guess the light bar, it could have looked like it lit up a little bit more. It's not electronic, but maybe they could have used a lighter clear blue plastic, maybe tried to do whatever they did with this guy with that to just have these light bars pop when the light hits them. Um, it's not bad. It's not like dead eyes in masterpiece transformers or third party transformers but that is really striking love how bright that is all right now that we've taken a thorough look at the ectomobile behave uh, time to transform all right to transform them the first thing you're going to need to do is remove this roof tech stuff uh, so you can unplug these uh, rubbery parts that plug into Ecto and they feel pretty sturdy. It doesn't feel like you're going to tear these like on a Coleco, Rambo or Sectars figure. Uh, they go in and out um, pretty easily without much force and you're going to want to unplug the antenna from the hood of the car as well. So this whole piece right here just lifts up 
and out. Like that. You, um, all you gotta do is kind of wiggle it out. And you see these two holes right here connect to these two pegs inside. So you can't see what you're doing, but it's easy to just pull it out. Uh, now, um, before we transform the car into robot mode, we want to transform this stuff into the proton pack. So we take, this is the wand, which the Ghostbusters use. that fires the proton stream. We detach it from the side. Uh, this red gun looking thing is on a swivel, so it can actually pop out to the side like so. And this part flips well, before we do that we want to take this little uh what was the antenna and plug it into uh, this little hole right here pop it in there and now you can shut this thing and it just shuts it doesn't actually plug into anything and uh, stays shut and then you take this blue stuff the the blue hose and it will connect to the proton wand so there's a little hole holes and pegs all over the place here but that connects that way so that it's not just a blaster it's actually connected to the proton pack Ghostbusters style so we will set this aside now and to transform the car, you gotta kinda get your thumb in here or I guess you could push down like that on these uh, side door pieces and you push them in and then you swing them up like that. So down from there up to the top like so and then with the feet the feet just move down like that and you can pull the legs out like on a lot of transformers separate them and he's got heel spurs which help him not fall backward and those just pull out like that and the legs pull out. These shin pieces do open up, but um, that's, I think, mainly for transforming them back into car mode. You would collapse them and then close them up. For transforming them into robot mode, I find you can just pull them and then close that back up. He'll spur out, and that's his lower body complete. Upper body is pretty easy. It's actually very similar to a lot of modern Transformers. You just separate the two arms, and then you're going to swivel the shoulders forward, pull the hands down, the forearms, and the hands are hidden in the forearms. Just pull those out like that. And then for this part right here, uh, your this part is gonna be facing forward. So in order to do that, you have to push this panel down on both sides. So it's connected to the wheel and it just goes up and down. And when you push those panels down, that gives the clearance for the bumper to rotate forward. And that looks awesome. I just love it. Um, when Transformers look kibbly, I love when the uh, look of the vehicle comes through on the robot, like uh, Jazz's Porsche chest, that type of thing, Optimus's truck chest. So having the actual bumper of the Cadillac on the front 
just looks awesome. And then the final step is you open up the chest and nice little tab there so you can put your uh, thumbnail on it. And you pull the head out, close that back up. And that is Ectotron transformed into robot mode. And the final step is attaching the proton pack onto them. So the light bar on the back has a little hole, like a rectangular shaped hole. And the proton pack right here has a rectangular shaped tab. And the tab just plugs in to the light bar, like so. Uh, the ladder right here, um, you could attach it to his leg and just have it um, hanging out down there, but I prefer to to have uh, it plugged up here. I mean, I guess that looks more like a proton pack if it doesn't have that going there. And just for the sake of showing you what it's supposed to look like uh, over on the other leg, this uh, ladder just is supposed to plug there and, and stay down there. Um, I guess that looks fine, but I kind of like the look of um, just kind of running along the side of the back. It just kind of looks like it's, I don't know, more, more tech um, stuff coming out, attaching to the robot. Uh, but whatever your preference, I'll just stick it down here for now since we'll do it the official way for once. Um, and you take his proton uh, wand and it just plugs into his hand. The fists, the hands aren't fists like a lot of G1 Transformers. They're actual hands, but they're curved so that it's the same effect when you're plugging in a, a gun with a tab like that. So I really like that the, the wand actually has a hose that connects all the way to the proton pack and then another hose back here. Uh, it, it just makes him look a lot like a Ghostbuster because Ghostbusters had so many hoses coming off of them. And let's take a look at the actual robot and some of the cool little details they have on here. He's got some goggles like Dr. Stance. And it's, it's kind of funny, like he's got blue eyes. You can see them under there. Just, just ever so slightly peeking out. I thought maybe these goggles moved, but he is uh, sculpted like that. So he's just got goggles slightly covering his eyes some silver paint on his face but I like the goggles um, makes him look a lot like Ray and his head moves left and right and also because this thing is here for the transformation uh, he can actually if you disconnect this tab in here see how this tab connects to that but if you disconnect it he can actually look up because that's an important part of a Ghostbuster being able to look up at ghosts. So that's a, an extra little kind of unplanned point of articulation or it's a bonus as part of his transformation. Uh, he's got great arm articulation. Um, it stops right here, it hits the, the windshield. But uh, he's got great elbow articulation. It's like almost a double joint right here. So instead of just bending like that at the elbow, he's got all of this extra range right here. Again, um, hitting his bumper. This, the, uh, the price you pay for how cool this shoulder detail looks is it limits a little bit of his articulation and uh, a little bit of a loose tolerance on some of these things. Uh, stuff popping out. He's got enough articulation to um, to hold on to his gun with with two hands. Um, this is going to be a, a recurring theme for Ectotron. Things unplugging, popping out. It's kind of the safety precaution. 
So instead of breaking, it'll just fall out. I'll take that any day of the week over something breaking. And uh, it'd be cool if his hand could grip it from underneath, but it doesn't swivel that way. Best you can do is grab it from above to try to steady the wand. And what else we got here? There's no uh, waist swivel, but he's got a hip swivel. And knees have fantastic articulation. That's pretty good for such a bulky bot. Um, no ankle tilt. So many of these newer Transformers have ankle tilts. He does not. So a lot of the time on the newer guys, this will tilt down so that he's flat-footed, even when you uh, spread his legs like this. But he's more of like a 90s Transformer in that sense. Um, and can he do the splits? Most likely, most of these newer Transformers can. Big time, big time splits. So lots of great range, lots of posability. Really dynamic looking bot. Like we're, we're talking um, third party masterpiece level of, uh, of articulation here. I'm, I'm really impressed actually for uh, our heel spur. These tend to fall back in. They don't stay out very well. So if you're having trouble standing your Ectotron up, it's probably because these popped in so smoothly you didn't even notice. But I'm really impressed at how much articulation this bulky classic Cadillac has. It's really, really impressive. Yeah, he is a really cool looking bot. And one of the details I just love is that his name is on the front here, name tag style like on the actual Ghostbusters outfits. So the Ghostbusters in the first movie had tan outfits. So they've given him tan coloration here, tan chest and Ectotron, just like Venkman, Stance, Spengler and Zedmore had name tags on there. So that's another awesome little, little feature, little Easter egg for big Ghostbusters fans included there. Very cool looking bot. And then um, probably his coolest feature is you just put in uh, th three double D batteries in the proton pack and push this button. And the proton wand actually shoots the stream. If you get two of these guys, don't cross the streams. It would be bad. So as far as crossover toys goes, this is a pretty cool one. If you're a big Ghostbusters fan and a big Transformers fan, this one actually kind of makes sense. It's cool to have another Ecto in the collection. Uh, the robot looks fantastic. It doesn't look like just a lazy afterthought. And I just love that in robot mode, he's um, he's got certain details that uh, make him look like he actually could have been in uh, a 90s Ghostbusters movie. Thanks again to Micah and Adam for Ectotron. This is how I'm going to be displaying him from now on. One in robot mode and one in vehicle mode. Also wanted to give a warm welcome to two new members of the Patreon tribe, Jason Brand and Michael Butcher. And a big thank you to Carl Stitz. Thank you for the extra cheese. Shout out to the top 10 highest contributing Patreon tribe members ever. Thank you, Scott Orr, Eric Lutz, Shane O, EJW, Iron Lords Podcast, David Went, Joe, Hector Martinez, Cameron Johnson, and Nick Filippelli. Thanks for watching, sharing, and hitting like, and to join the tribe. Hit subscribe. Nerd mistake. Oh no!